why the hell didn't I think about this sooner? Hey, so, you know whenever you go to bed, your mind begins to wander before you go to sleep? Well, that happens to me too. And sometimes, that can actually lead to some ideas for future projects. And, uh, last night, at least by the time of recording this video, I thought of some really crazy idea that, honest to God, I really wish I thought of sooner. What if, and bear with me here, your favorite YouTubers were imagined as superheroes. Yes, you heard that all correctly. I shit you not, this idea literally came to me last night. As a matter of fact, I just got finished making a few entries, and I am obligated to show you what I came up with at this point, because I feel that if I don't, I might die in like three days. And we cannot have that happening, right? But I don't think showing you just images of my ideas like a kid showing his mother his next drawing would be enough. So I figure why not demonstrate through speed paints? Hell, I'm sure many of you watching this have probably already seen my speed paint video where I make Hollywood monsters as superheroes. For those who haven't, I suggest you watch that video and give it a like. And I would be eternally grateful if you give this video a like too, and maybe even subscribe and hit that notification bell. That would be very much appreciated. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Or am I? <laughs> okay, so starting off, we have someone that you might be familiar with. I mean, let's be real, who doesn't know this guy by now? That's right, Markiplier. Now, for this one, uh, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. Now, in terms of superpowers, I figured why not give him some based on the most, or one of the most iconic things Markiplier is known for, his wharf stash, which is basically a pink mustache. Now, as goofy as this may sound, his powers are based on his mustache. Now, I got this idea from a, uh, a Ben 10 alien from Omniverse called Molestache, who's basically this little mole-like alien who as well has a super-powered mustache. And what a mustache it is. It could be used for a variety of reasons, whether it be attacking enemies or, or grabbing any heavy objects. Again, it's such a goofy-ass ability, but I figured it was one best suited for a Markiplier-based superhero, am I right? Though that's really the only superhuman ability I could think of giving this guy. Also, I uh, made some character bases for my own I, that I hand-drawn personally instead of just using bases that I download on Google Images or something like that. And also, I am using my phone, just to let you guys know, I don't have all the sophisticated stuff that other people use. Anyway, for the symbol on this uniform, I, go, I went for something like a mustache shaped like a pair of arms flexing. And of course, I made it pink like his wharf stash. Of course, I also decided to add in the red streak in his hair that Markiplier had at one point. As far as colors for the uniform go, I basically went for the standard black and red colors. Like, like he has like a black uniform, black, uh, no, red gloves, sorry, red boots. Along with a few traces of magenta, which is, which I guess is a variation of pink. And overall, I'm pretty glad how well this turned out. So here's the superhero Markiplier I dub Warstash. Next up is my all-time favorite spooky gal herself, Madame Macabre. Uh, for those who are more into the spooky side of things, I recommend giving her channel a watch. Trust me, she has some of the best videos, and not to mention her music videos are so freaking baller. So, being the spooky gal she is, I figure why not give her some of the spookiest abilities out there. Firstly, is her ability to interact with various monsters from the monster world. 
which is a nod to uh, Madame Macabre's comic series, The Seer, which has long been discontinued, which kind of sucks in my opinion. Now, as far as costumes go, I went for something a little similar to what she wears IRL. In fact, as you, as you can see here, I use a 2D art piece as well as a real photo of Madame Macabre herself for reference material in terms of making the costume. A tail coat combined with a corset, some black leather boots, you name it, the whole shebang. And the costume itself may not be as original compared to the others on this list, but but it was better than nothing. Now the boots, I made I wanted to make up a little similar to the ones worn by Master Xehanort from Kingdom Hearts, as well as those worn by the members of Organization 13. Now the hair was obviously the hardest thing for me to do. Like it took me like a few tries to get it just right. It took me like a few tries to get it down just right. Now for the face, I did the usual cross shape before adding in the facial features. I didn't want to make the eyebrows a little bushy, but not too thin either, like to the point where they were non-existent. But I'm happy with how well the face turned out. I even contemplated whether or not I should leave her ear exposed, but I decided not to. All right, now the next thing was adding the glasses. Since Madame Macabre wears glasses in real life, I decided why not give her some glasses. I also figured why not give her a little bat necklace to really go with the macabre style, along with a leather choker too. Okay, so now with all that done, all I had to do now was just erase some of the unnecessary lining. Plus, I also wanted to give her some black colored nails like to really go with the creepy gothic style. Plus, I think Madame Macabre herself would also rock them nails. Of course, I had the final touches of the costume, like some extra lines on the buttons. All right, now all we do now is add the coloring. For this one, I went for more of the darker coloring, like dark brown hair, you know, typical goth colors. I'm not saying Madame Macabre looks bad in goth, I think she looks awesome. Also, I know Madame Macabre herself doesn't have red colored eyes, I just thought the red eyes were a good aesthetic choice. For the costume, same as I said before, standard goth colors like usual black, gr dark gray, so a bit of white, again, standard goth colors. Plus, I also thought the purple eye shadow was also a good aesthetic touch. The interior of the coat, however, was more red color because I didn't want to make it too black. I also chose a bit of darker gray on the soles of the boots as well as the cuffs. And another ability that I decided to give her was her ability to use magic. So I added in a magical circle, and the symbol of which I was contemplating for a bit. I wanted the symbol to be original, but I didn't want to make it, like, somewhat satanic. Ultimately, I decided with an I symbol, along with an X in the center of it, which is, again, a nod to Madame Macabre's comic, The Seer. I also decided to add some runes into it, you know, just for the flair. And I used a bit of spray paint to make it look like it's glowing. I know it's not exactly perfect, but remember, I'm using my phone. Another thing I decided would be cool to add was a pair of demonic wings which of course allows her the ability of flight. Now, yes, I went for the demonic bat wings because, well, I figured it would be pretty cool and, uh, and I figured it makes sense since Madame Macabre makes videos about monsters, creepypastas, you know, typical spooky shit. And of course, I figured dark gray and dark purple would be the perfect colors for the wings. Make way, Elvira, because here comes Nightshade. Next up is another familiar face I'm sure many of you may recognize, PewDiePie. Now, much like with the Markiplier superhero, this one was also a bit of a no-brainer. Much like how Markiplier's superhero counterpart was inspired by his wharf stash, I fear why not I base PewDiePie's superhero counterpart with his bro fist. Now, for the design of this one, it was pretty basic and simple. Design-wise, I basically went for those, uh, you know those POW bubbles you find in comic books and all that? I also decided to add the fist symbol on the chest for some good measure. Like I said, the designing of the costume was pretty basic. Even his mask has the boom bubble design. Now, I didn't really know what abilities to give him, but I remember that not all superheroes have superpowers. I mean, look at Batman, for example. He doesn't have any powers, but instead he has some really cool gadgets. So I figured why not do the same for the superhero PewDiePie. So for weapons based on his bro fists, I went, I figured why not give him some gauntlets? 
as these gauntlets allow him to punch through even the thickest of barriers, like stone walls, reinforced metal barriers, you name it. I also thought that adding the spikes on the knuckles was also a pretty good aesthetic choice, but aside from that, that's really all he's got going for. He doesn't really have any, he doesn't really have much superhuman abilities, as I said before. Now, of course, the coloring for his costume, I pretty much went with the colors on the Brofist symbol on Pew that PewDiePie has. The usual navy blue with cyan, along with the uh, grayish white. As I said before, it's pretty basic, but all in all, I'm glad how well this one turned out. I present you with Knuckle Duster. So next up is my favorite robotic bookworm, Tail Foundry. For those who have a love for literature and like to hit the books often, then I would suggest you check out Tail Foundry's channel. I promise you, he talks about some of the most interesting stuff. Of course, I wanted to make his design somewhat similar to Tail Foundry himself, but I didn't want to make it too similar. And I didn't want to make him look too futuristic, instead I leaned into more of the archaic, antique, automaton style. Kind of like something you would find in steampunk. Now as far as abilities go, he has the standard powers you find in a robot-like figure. For one, he has enhanced intelligence. How intelligent is he, you may be asking? Well, he's smart enough to outthink even a supercomputer by a mere millisecond. Yeah. That's some serious brain power. Another ability I decided to give him is anatomy manipulation. What this means is that certain parts of his body can easily rotate. Like, for example, his head can rotate at exactly 360 degrees. Now, for the coloring, I went for something like the old gray metal, like, like you find on old machines or any, or any old objects made out of metal. Like, for example, you'll find an old car that hasn't been used in years. That's basically what I mean. And of course, like Tail Foundry, this guy too it also has a love for literature. All in all, I'm really glad with how this guy turned out. I really like it. Possibly one of my most favorites, if I'm being completely honest. So anyway, with all that done, I present to you Gearhead. And last but not least, for today, we have Gaijin Goomba. For any of you fellow weebs out there, I recommend giving this guy a watch. Trust me, this dude makes videos regarding anything involving Japanese culture. So design-wise, I decided to make this, make this one a humanoid mushroom, which is a callback to the Goomba mascot for his channel. Of course, I went for the shinobi attire, the katana, even a Taoist symbol just for some added measure. And of course, I had this little guy made as a legendary warrior that prowls throughout the Japanese islands, just kicking bad guy ass in the traditional shinobi or samurai style. Now, for abilities, he's skilled in three different things. Swordsmanship, ninjutsu, and of course, Onmiudo. As far as the colorations go, I went for the coloring of Little G, which is basically the mascot for for the Gaijin Gooba channel. I went with the red color, brown, and slight tan color. I also went for some yellow coloring, and for the sword, I went with bluish gray color. But all in all, I like the way this one turned out. From the land of the rising sun, here comes the Shiitake Shinobi. So anyway, that's gonna be pretty much it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and of course, hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date. As always, I will see you folks next time.